Good morning folks and welcome to the workshop and welcome to a tool review. Now absolutely ages ago John Lynn Leather sent me a couple of tools for me to try, review and share my thoughts on but he sent me these tools right at the beginning of the journey of moving the workshop. So I've had them for ages, I've had a play with them, quite like them, um, but this is the first opportunity, because literally this week, everything has been finally set up in the studio so I can film um, this, basically. So this is where all the new um, videos are gonna be filmed, but this certainly is where the review for these tools are going to be today. So he sent me a beveler and a scythe. It's not an unboxing because I have unboxed these and I've already seen them, but they do come in these lovely white boxes. Let me just pop that open. And we see here, a little bit of box dust, this lovely presentation of these tools. We'll tip it over, take it off, and that's how that comes. Look at that. Beautifully done. D2 steel, I understand. Still got a bit of sticky on them. Really ought to give them a bit of a wipe. But to all intents and purposes, these are the tools. Now, John Lynn is a tool maker. On Instagram as John Lynn Leather. I've got a number three beveler here. And again, with bevelers, we can't always equate number three to the number three with another maker. So we could be looking at George Barnsley, Barry King, Palisanto, all beveler makers, Wuta, any number of others, um, all have a number three, but their number threes all differ. Um, but certainly with this number three, and, and it's, it's, I suppose it's kind of a thing that once you get a beveler or a tool maker that you like, you get the set and your zero zero, because Barry King has a zero 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 one two three four. Um, Jeremiah Watt has a zero one two three four five. Um, George Barnsley has a zero one two three four five. Palisanto has a zero one one point five two three. Um, not sure about the four. Might have been updated on the website, always worth a check. So you tied into a, a make, you like the look of, you stick with it, then you can get the various sizes. But it's not often a good idea to get a number three from one, a number two from another, a number uh, zero from another, because you might find you put them together, they're all the same size. Uh, but certainly looking at these, this is different. It's different because of the shape of the handle, how it's made, the ferrule. I like them, I like them. And this, I suppose the closest thing we're coming across is, is the um, Crimson Hyde pipe shape awl. Um, there's an element of that about it, which actually the pipe shaped awl fits really nice in the hand. I've been used to a straight awl for 30 odd years, picked one of those up and it just felt absolutely right. This is reminiscent of that. It fits low in the fingers. It's really nice. There's a flat part on top, put your finger on top of that and it's intimate. It's shorter than many other bevelers, which brings the hand forward and you are much closer to the leather. I'm, I'm liking that. And the shape of the ferrule it's just angular and oh, it's kind of sweet it's different they're not round everything we get these are around with a bit of a shape here and they're beautiful there, there are things of beauty you, you look at some of the wood some people are making it's just gorgeous this is no different um, but the shape, the style of it, there's a step away, there's a uniqueness, there's an individuality. It's, it's not a direct lift of another tool. He's obviously put some thought into this and I like it, I, I do. I'm, I'm, I'm warming very much so. It's the sort of thing that I would have a full set of. Um, but this, 
I can hold it loosely, I can hold it firmly. Ultimately, the, the question is always going to be, does it work? Let's have a quick look at the, the Skyver. So we're looking at something that actually I hadn't noticed before. I was going to give you the thickness of the stock and it's about two mil here. But truth be told, it tapers down the full length. It has an entire grind on it, which has brought the weight right down. And then we have a good eight millimeter grind. It's a single grind by the looks of it. Oh no, there's two grinds. So there's a secondary grind at the tip. Um, I'm more inclined to go for a single grind. Not entirely sure about the secondary grind. I can feel here there's a little bit of a burr. So I may give this the slightest of polishes before I actually skive with it. It is a right-hander. I'm not the strongest when it comes to skiving with my right hand because I'm left-handed. I will give it a go. But if I struggle or make a complete hash of it, I've got a Sam. I'm going to stick her in front of the camera and she can show you what it does because she's right-handed. Um, but nonetheless, it's D2 steel. It's tapered all the way down, which I've not come across in any other tool like this before. Um, everything, every edge is rounded. There are no sharp edges. And how many times do we go to use a tool like this and we get fatigue because the edges are sharp, they dig in and we end up wrapping them in leather. None of this. You can really, really grip this. That's actually really, it's a nice touch. And it's not a touch I've noticed anybody else doing. There is absolutely no edge. That is polished off beautifully. Well, I've not used them yet and they, they're in for a win. Okay, so. I'm, I'm just waffling. I'm just waffling. Um, I've not picked these up for a while because I've been building the workshop. I've gone back to them. I'm seeing things I didn't see before. I'm seeing things that I'm impressed with. I like the weight of it. It's not flexing, albeit it goes down from two to one mil. There's no flex. So there's absolute rigidity in the hand when you're going to use this tool. And it feels gorgeous. I think the most important thing is I'm just going to give this the barest of licks on the polishing mop. I don't think it's blunt. I think it's sharp. It just hasn't been stropped. So I'm going to give that a little bit of a polish so we get the best representation of it. And then we're going to take some leather or we're going to get some leather and take the tools to the leather and see what they do. I have a piece of three mil thick shoulder. Let's start with the beveler. So the first thing that I notice is the groove on the back is very, very deep. Much deeper than many other bevelers. That's quite distinct. So that's almost given two bars either side. So we've got to be conscious now if that leaves a line or not. We have probably it depends on the angle, but we've probably got a one and a half, maybe two mil recess from the end of the tooth to where the blade sits. That's interesting. Um, I wonder if that's uniform throughout all the tools. I've only got one of them here at the moment, so I can't say. But certainly that's, that's a very distinct grind. Very distinct. And we've got a beautiful, heavy top grind at the top. Given the thickness and the, the stock looks to be about three mil thick and we're looking at quite a narrow section between the two grooves, it looks like it could sharpen up beautifully, but ultimately proof in the pudding. Nice loose, loose grip, no power to start with. Let's have a quick look at the back, the rough part of the leather. Well. That's ridiculous. That's rounded, which all of a sudden is going to make slicking so much easier. Let's do the grain side. No little line. Sometimes with a deep grind, there's a hint of it, but it is so close that has rounded that lever beautifully. 
and that's a number three. That looks absolutely gorgeous. That really has done a lovely job. Okay. I mean, there's not an awful lot more I can do than bevel a bit of leather and show you what that looks like, but that has just rounded that. So if that gets now slicked in, that's going to be a beautiful rounded edge. I would imagine with a tighter, you get a flatter. With a bigger, you get rounder. So you're increasing and decreasing the size um, to get the edge that you want. But sometimes you can get even like a number two on other makes on a three mil piece of leather. And it, it, it gives a very angular finish. Whereas here, because that curve on the back is so deep and rounded that that has begun rounded which means i mean if you use my slickers that are specifically designed to um burnish the bevels as well as the edge but if you use some of the cheap versions which they, they have a curve on but the curve doesn't match the bevel or the leather that you're using at all you end up mushrooming the leather because you're applying so much force to the leather to get it flat because the groove does not fit the leather then you end up crushing the edge and you get it's what's called mushrooming because you, you, you're basically swelling the top of the leather to get that flat edge. So you're working against yourself. You're applying too much force to get it right because your slicker is wrong. This is why the Armitage leather slicker is so much better. The grooves fit the job you're doing. However, however, your choice is to rush out and buy the Armitage leather slicker good idea or you buy a tool with a deep groove on the back that rounds it that's going to make that job so much easier which is going to match your slicker i'm selling these now i'm not i'm, not. I'm reviewing them but i'm so far quite impressed that's that's pretty good now i'm led to believe that these have been cut deep on the back short on the tip to use almost like a bisonette. We have to buy bisonettes when we're cutting internal curves because the teeth are too long, the groove isn't deep enough. We have to find a different tool, which is almost beveling at a right angle. But I'm led to believe that these will bevel an internal curve. Shall we find out? So here I have a 10 mil hole punch. For beveling internally that's not a big hole that's not all actually a hole either now it is so that's a 10 millimeter hole apparently this will bevel this should we find out let's do the back first the hard bit get the angle right that is ridiculous. I will be honest, I haven't tried this with other bevelers. Yeah, so I've gone quiet for a reason. I don't know if you can see that. Let me turn it over and do the good side. I may have to choose a different colour piece of leather. Or not. That. <laughs> That's ridiculous. A 10 mil hole. Look at that. Well, beveling the edge of the leather aside, if there were a reason to buy this, that's it. That is ridiculous. Okay. John Lynn, if you are of a mind to send me everything that you've made, please do so. Because 
you sold me on this. That's not only beautiful, it's incredibly effective. It does the job really well. So I've just done 10 mil and, and that's gone beautifully. But what if we wanted to do a belt slot? We're potentially looking at five mil. So I have here a five mil hole punch. This might be pushing it far too far. But let's look for the limit. We know 10 mil works. 10 mil works beautifully. I mean, if this works, I'm not entirely sure if some bisonets can actually cope with this. Let's find out. This is the grain side. That struggled a little, but it is the grain side of the lever. However, we could polish that in. That's the flesh side, sorry. This is the grain side. Let's find out what the grain size does. <laughs> okay. I can't even get my finger in there to give it a buff. Now this is my slicker, so I've developed this so the grooves can be used, the bar can be used, the head can be used, but I've never found an excuse to use the tip. I have now. And it's actually a little big for that. But nonetheless, that's amazing. I'd need something an awful lot smaller, to be fair, to do that justice. But certainly for the 10 mil, that slicks that edge in beautifully. So yeah, something half the size of this to get that five mil. But it bevels a five mil hole which if you are making knife sheaths or pancakes, pancakes, pancake holsters, um, or something with a belt slot in, you can bevel the slot with one of these, not having to buy another bisonette because this will not only bevel the slot as well, it will bevel the edge of your leather. One tool that does both beautifully. So the Skyvis had a little bit of a polish at front end and let's just find a scrappy end and just give that a gentle shove and that just sails through three millimeter shoulder. Beautiful. So that's sharp. So again I am not right-handed, but I'm going to have a go right-handed. And we're not looking at forcing the tool ahead. We're looking at gently creating our line. And it's a wavy line because again, not favoring my strong hand. But even two passes, it's going through an absolute, oh, there we are, variation. That actually comes out quite lovely. Let's see what I can do about straightening that line up with my right hand. Putting a lot of effort into this. She's been paying off. <laughs> yeah, definitely not a good technique for me with my right hand, but let's persevere with it because imagine now somebody who isn't adept at skiving, even with their strong hand, 
because that's a good example. I'm using my right hand and I'm left-handed and I'm still achieving. So why don't we give this to a right-hander and have a look? Well, it's been a little while since I held a sky as well, but we'll, we'll give it a go. I'm gonna leave the glasses on. Okay. I must admit, I played with these a little bit when they first arrived and really, really enjoyed how easy this shape and this size of scythe is for a person who doesn't do a great deal of it. Also, I think perhaps because some of the wider scythes are take that there's a lot more drag to them. A sky of this shape and size can perhaps be a little easier to use. I'm finding it difficult to talk and scythe, but we'll see how we go. It really does just melt through the leather. And as Nigel mentioned before, it's a very, very comfortable tool in the hand. I'm not sure, maybe I need to stand up, but oh, we're getting there. So I think that's pass number three. Don't rush it, Sam. Take your time. Rushing is not your friend. Let the tool do the work. There we are, it's coming. And how's that? There you go. I'm really impressed with myself as well as the tool. That was pretty damn good. It really, really does make the job of creating a scythe as easy and user friendly as possible. Um, I mean, you can see that has has come off. It's not, it's not bad scythe actually. It's a little bit uneven, but that's my lack of practice in that. But I, I would, I would say that's. That's not bad at all. I enjoy that. Now, an interesting thing that I've come across recently um, is the distinct difference that different countries, leather workers, use their tools. And I'm seeing an awful lot recently where some of the um, leather workers in China, Singapore, and possibly some in South Korea, using their tools differently. French Skive is a prime example. I see an awful lot of the leather workers in the East using their French Skive full width, whereas certainly over here in the UK, we use half the tool to achieve a Skive. I'm also seeing a lot of leather workers, um, again, in the East, using this tool grind down. Now, over here, we like the grind up because we can get the tool flatter and we can see the grind, so we can see the angle a little better. If I turn this over, grind down, it becomes left-handed. So let's just give that a go. Now, I'm not keen on this method because now I can't see the grind. So therefore, I can't see the angle. It's also bringing the hand up much, much higher, which I feel is taken away a little bit of the intimacy, but nonetheless, I am still achieving really, really well. And that is a beautiful feathered scythe using the tool, how I would describe it, the wrong way around. But, the test would be, can we take that high point off without taking any more off? And we'll just create our line. You can see all of a sudden, with my left hand, I can get a much straighter line. In addition to that, it's also the inconsistencies of the thickness of the leather sometimes. Now, what I'm trying to do is actually take this high point off so this is where I'm trying to govern the height of the tool without seeing the bevel. 
and it's entirely possible I've done it but this is a little lower because that's not letting me take any more off and all that high point has gone and that is flat so the leather was a little lower at this point here but nonetheless that has taken that ridge off now if I try and continue and what I'm after doing here is now going much further so I'm trying to take off more leather so I'm thinning down the edge so I'm keeping the angle quite harsh and we can see what a fine feather is getting taken off at the top end and that's coming out paper thin and that's over about 10 mil so even nose down which from my perspective is the incorrect way still works so it doesn't matter which way round you hold the tool it's kind of effective both ways and that is beautifully smooth almost there's a glint of a polish to it I don't know if we're going to get that on camera at all but there is a hint of a shine to the leather where it's cut so beautifully smooth but without doubt you can see there there's a smooth surface very smooth surface I'm just trying to find an angle where you can see it I'm turning into a fanboy so John Lynn tools John Lynn leather on Instagram give them a follow if you're in the market for a beveler there are so many fantastic bevelers to choose from there are so many fantastic skiving knives to choose from this is one more the selling point for me the skive is fantastic it works both ways we can use it left and right handed um, this technique is a little unorthodox for me but I've achieved I've also achieved a reasonable effort using my right hand so if you aren't strong with the skive it is going to help you um, D2 steel can't argue with that um, the fit and finish of the knife is ridiculous the way that it tapers the full length and is absolutely rounded on all sides make it so comfortable to use um, it's a win but the, the one thing that has really spoken to me was the ability to be able to bevel inside a five millimeter hole. That's ridiculous. So you would have, I've got bisonettes in here that I've had to bought in addition to the edges and the bevelers because there's an edger, there's a beveler, and there's a bisonette. They're all different. They all do a different job. You tend to find the edges are flat, the bevelers are rounded and the bisonettes are also rounded. This is heavily rounded on the back. It's a very short tooth system, which means even on thin leather, when you engage with the leather, especially going around a hole, the tooth isn't fouling on the board beneath, lifting it away from the leather, making it effective. And that is effective. Folks, it's a win. It's a win. Um, I don't know what else to say. I want to see the rest of their tools. John Lynn? what else you got let's test it let's see how far you can push it brilliant well done well done if you're new to the market you are certainly making something that is credible of being there and is worthy of people's purchase so let's just talk about the tech specs for a minute i'm on the edge beveler at the moment now these come in six sizes so we have the 00, zero which is 0.4 mil, good for one mil leather. Uh, we have the zero, 0, 0.6, uh, the number one, 0.8. Uh, number two is one mil. 
The number three, which is the one I have here, is 1.2 mil, and the number four is 1.4 mil. And apparently the three and four are good for three mil leather and above, which is what I've used it on. Um, so you one mil or you zero zero for one mil leather, and then anything in between for the varying sizes, depending on the sort of edge that you want. The steel, it's VG10 cutlery stainless steel. Uh, it's vacuum heat treated up to 61 Rockwell. So that's kind of cool. So he's using good steel for his tools, uh, with D-Tool being the tooling steel for the um, Skyver and VG10 for the bevelers. So really good. They're going to outlast uh, anybody. I mean, we're using carbon steel tools over 100, 150 years old that are still effective in the workshop today. Certainly some of the tools I have in here are, and they're still used today. So your great, great grandkids are gonna be using these tools. They're gonna to last. At the moment, it says Coca Bolo. Um, whether the wood choices are custom specific, I don't know. A little bit of research on your part if you're going to buy, but if you went for the Coca Bolo ones, it's stunning. Coca Bolo is gorgeous wood, but yes, there we go, a little bit of tech specs thrown in at the end. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this review. I've certainly enjoyed using them. Yes, I've had them for a while. I didn't use them anywhere near as much as I wanted to because I've been building the workshop and teaching. Um, today, I discovered more about the tools on video. So you kind of had a, a little bit of an honest um, first time reaction because I found out things about these tools that I didn't know before and it's pretty cool pretty cool so yeah let me know what you think drop uh, John Lynn uh, follow on Instagram let them know what you think and uh, go and buy some tools there's no reason not to take care enjoy bye bye